All right, it is top of the hour and we're going to get started. My name is Grant Hicks. Really glad to be here with you today. And I want to share with you some strategies on how you can grow your practice and make it even stronger. I'm going to start off right off the bat by giving you a great idea. I want you to write these two words down. So if you can write these two words down, we're going to make sure that we're testing the screen, make sure that everything is working. Okay. There we go. All right. So I want you to write these two words down. Beneficiary audit. You see, if you haven't done a beneficiary audit, it could be extremely valuable for clients. So let me give you an example. If you said to a prospect or a client, would it be valuable if we did a beneficiary audit, which is essentially we're going to take all your statements and all your investments and all your insurance and make sure that the proper beneficiaries are laid out exactly how you want it and make sure we look at a copy of your will and your estate and make sure that those two coincide. And so we're going to perform a beneficiary audit service to make sure that exactly what you're looking for and we're going to summarize it all on one page. Would that be valuable to you? The question is, would a beneficiary audit or beneficiary audit service be valuable to you? Most people say, yeah, that'd be great. And summarize it all on one page for them. Put it all together. So here's what we want to do when we do a beneficiary audit service. So when you do a beneficiary audit service, you have to collect all the information, all the statements, all the investments, all the insurance, and you get a complete summary of all, all that. And then you can summarize it on one page. And when you talk to your client or prospect, you say, when we usually do this exercise, we usually find that not as everything's exactly how people want it, so there is some minor corrections there, but we usually find that there is one beneficiary that is not clearly named or sometimes not clearly spelled out. And they kind of look at you and you say, do you know who that beneficiary is? And they're like, well, I'm not sure. Well, that beneficiary is the government. How much tax is going to be lost on the estate planning side of things when you die? That is a potential beneficiary. So why don't we summarize that all on one page? And you can see how valuable the beneficiary audit service can be for clients. And so as you offer this service to, to clients, people are like, yeah, that'd be a great, valuable service. And so what I want to do today, my attention today, is taking you from products and services to planning and advice. And Beneficiary Audit is a service about planning and advice. So I want to share a story with you. I had these clients in. I was a financial advisor for over 20 years. And I had these couple in that were a second marriage. They were retired in second marriage. And when I sat down, essentially, how much do you want for your estate? And I'll summarize that on one page. You know, Mr. Client, and he says, I want to make sure it all goes to my two kids because it was a second marriage. And how much do you want, Mrs.? And... I want to make sure that it goes to my three kids. And so when we sat down and we looked at it, it was a bit of a mess that they had a whole bunch of stuff in joint names, so it wouldn't actually end up the way that they really wanted it. And so we summarized it each for them on one page. And so eventually we went through this whole planning process to make sure that their estate was exactly how they wanted it, their beneficiaries were all correct and accurate, and they had all the accounts set up. And after all this work and all this effort and all this planning, they came back to me and they said, you know, Grant, that was really valuable, the beneficiary audit service. What do we owe you for that service? And for the first time, it dawned on me. It floored me. I saw the future of financial services. It was not about products and service. It was about advice and planning. So what I want you to do is just tomorrow, when you start to talk to prospects and clients, ask them, did you know about our beneficiary audit service? No, what is that? Well, let me tell you about that. And that's gonna lead into the planning and advice discussions that you're looking for to do more insurance, more estate planning, because it is about the power of words. I'm a true believer, the power of words. See, I don't call it estate planning. I call it a beneficiary audit. Would a beneficiary audit be valuable to you if you understood exactly what's going to happen and write it all down on one page? And most people say, yeah, that'd be fantastic. So let's do a beneficiary audit. It's a very 
easier approach than saying, let's do an estate plan. It sounds like a big, complex 300-page plan with a lawyer and very costly, doesn't it? Most people don't know what an estate plan is. Let's just do a beneficiary audit service. Would that be valuable to you? So the question I want you to write down is, would a beneficiary audit service be valuable to you? What would most people say? Clients and prospects, yeah, that'd be great. Let's do that. So the second thing, I always tell advisors, you know, uh, they talk about their review process. And in future webinars, I'm going to talk about practice management and, you know, effective reviews. But I don't call them reviews. I call it a progress update. It just sounds better. It's me and semantics. Okay. But progress updates sound a heck of a lot better. What sounds better when you talk to clients? Uh, we'd love to have some referrals from you, or we'd love a favorable introduction. We'd love to have a referral or a favorable introduction. Sounds a little bit better. And I hear this all the time. You need to have a value proposition. My mentor, Bill Backrack, said, don't call it a proposition. Call it a promise. We're going to call it our value promise. It just sounds better to me. And, and the final thing I want to share with you today is I don't believe in financial planning at all. I think it's a misused, misunderstood term. It's a poorly used term. I only call it quality financial planning or a quality financial plan, quality financial and investment plan. Doesn't that sound better? So I know it's just words, but I want you to think about these words and how you can use in the context of your practice going forward. All right. So I want to introduce myself very briefly. You know, Grant Hicks, I wrote the book, Grill Marketing for Financial Advisors, uh, Series 1, about 10 years ago. And I started to do a whole bunch of speaking and, and seminars and workshops. And, a, and about a year ago, I spent three, four, five years researching on the best practices what financial advisors do around planet Earth. And I summarized it all and I put it together in a book. So I'm going to give you a copy of this because I think it's extremely valuable for your practice on what top advisors are doing in the future. So the link to the ebook, and we're going to show you in the questions and so forth. So if you want to write it down, um, here's the link to the ebook. We're also going to make sure that you get a, you know, an email afterwards to remind you to get a copy of the ebook. So it is about 250 pages. It is the whole pile of stuff, but it's an easy thing that you can scroll down, click on a section saying, "I want to do more favorable introductions," and how do I do that? I want to do a feedback seminar, and how do I do that? So it's a whole bunch of different series of strategies that'll really help grow your business. And you don't have to do all of them, but there's one or two in there that'll really help propel your business in 2018 and beyond. So I want to share with you a little story. Uh, I was a financial advisor. I've been in the industry for 28 years. And about three years ago, after I sold my practice, I had a practice of 120 million, a team of six. And when I sold my practice, I became the National Director of Practice Management for a firm in Canada called Manulife. You know, most of you would be familiar with John Hancock in the United States, which they own, so the same type of firm. So I was the National Director of Practice Management. I was traveling the whole country. That year, I did about 110 flights. And I was seeing all these top advisors, top practices, and collecting the information, some of the research for my book. And it dawned on me one day, it hit me like a lightning bolt, that the most successful financial advisors of the future will not be the same successful financial advisors of the past. I'll say that again. The most successful advisors of the future will not be the same successful advisors of the past. And I could see it clearly. And all I did was I summarized it on one page. And I want to share that page with you today. You see, it's about planning and advice, not products and services. So you could sit down with a prospect or a client, and I would ask them five goal, five questions. And I'll give you the questions, but let me just share with you the five questions. Would it be valuable to get clarity on your goals and values for the future and put that on paper? Do you have five, six, or seven goals of yours clearly mapped out on paper? Would that be a valuable exercise if we did that? Do you have your total financial house organized in all six areas? I'll go through the six areas quickly, but you'll understand the tax, estate or beneficiary audit, investment, risk management, insurance, and debt and cash flow. 
So tax, estate, investment, risk, insurance, debt, cash flow. So do you have your total financial house organized in all of those six areas? Most people kind of look at you and laugh when you ask that question. Do you understand question number three? Understand the total transparency of what you get and what you're paying for. So even the better question is, how do you feel when you're paying for something and not getting it? Question four, do you have a quality financial plan updated annually to meet all your goals? So as we're talking today about client acquisition, we want to ask these questions to be able to acquire the ideal clients we're looking for first, and then we're going to go and find them second. The final question is, do you have a team that you can coordinate and delegate to one person? In other words, we're going to help you create what I call a mini family office. So you can see at the bottom of the screen, there's a great little link here. Uh, Bill Backrack has an online coaching program. It's what, 900 bucks a year or 100 bucks a month. It's a fantastic program, and I highly encourage you. It's one that I use to really grow my practice. And so it's online coaching and training. Full disclosure, I do get a referral fee because uh, Bill and I are friends, but I want you to, at the very least, explore that as an option. So let's go into the specific questions that you could ask people. You can write these down. You can ask these people. These are the questions to really start to engage people. Would it be valuable to get clarity on your values and goals for future? Put it on paper. Very simple question. Would it be valuable to get your complete financial life organized and summarized in all six areas? Would it be helpful for you to understand total cost investing advice, planning, insurance advice? So the better question is how do you feel when you're paying for something and not getting it? I know how I feel. I'm pissed off. And so how do you feel when you're paying for something and not getting it? Would it be valuable to have a quality financial plan? Even more important, what's the probability of success in reaching all your goals with your current plan? What's the probability of success in reaching all your goals with your current plan? Most people look at you like the blank look like, hmm, I don't know. Well, sounds like you're on track so far. So putting together a team. So I want to give you some other key words that can be extremely valuable when you're shifting from products and services to planning and advice. Let me give you some other keywords. So would it be valuable to get clarity on your values and goals for future? Put it on, on paper. So name it. So one of the firms I work with is CMK Wealth Management. We're going to call it the CMK Clarity Discussion. And so we're going to walk you through the CMK Clarity Discussion, right? The second thing is, would it be valuable to get complete financial life in order? You see, if you write these two words down, you can make a lot of money from this. When you put together a progress update meeting or a review, as some advisors call it, when you sit down with existing clients and or prospects, you go through an agenda. And you might have a written agenda, you might have a verbal agenda, and you go through some things and items. Is, the, is an agenda valuable to them? No, not really. It just kind of keeps you on track. What is valuable in that meeting? is helping them reach their goals by putting together an implementation schedule of all the advice that they need to do to get them to where they want to go. What is the value of an implementation schedule to clients or prospects? Would it be valuable if you had a copy of this implementation schedule that shows you all the things you need to do to get to where you want to go? What would most people say? Implementation schedule, extremely valuable. So here's a little tip. Don't ever, ever, ever give it to them unless they have a majority of your business and you get a majority of their trust because an implementation schedule can be extremely valuable. This is a list of all your planning and advice specifically to help them get to their, where they want to go. Here's the schedule we put together. I encourage you to do what's called fee audits. So we do the CMK Wealth fee audit to show you all the costs of what you're currently paying and all the costs of how we do it. And it's not about the cost, it's about the value. It's all the list of all the services that you're going to provide them for virtually similar cost. So how do you feel when you buy a fully loaded vehicle for a base model price? It's a pretty good deal. Are you in? Yeah, I'm in, right? And so the cost might be similar, but it's really, it's demonstrating, articulating, 
and illustrating all of your value. That'll be a future webinar that we can do, is really how to illustrate all the value that you do deliver. So we're gonna to put together what we call the CMK Quality Financial and Investment Plan. And so would it be valuable to have a quality financial and investment plan? Probability of success. So we're gonna to put together through our process, our quality financial investment plan. And finally, we're gonna put a team together and I'm gonna show you how to put that team together. So Bill Backrack in his process always talks about seven critical conversations. So meeting people, having that emotional connection, and mastery at articulating your value. So I highly encourage you to, to check out the link. The one other thing that Bill always taught me, and here's me and Bill at his workshop in San Diego last year, is record your conversations. At the very, very least, do one recording with a client that you know, or even a colleague that you know, and record and listen to yourself back. Just do it once. I highly, highly encourage you. Just I. I can't stress this enough. If you do it once, the first time you do it, you'll do exactly what I did. It's like you listen to yourself backwards, back afterwards, and you go, well, I, I suck. I could use some help. So you really get better at mastering the meeting, mastering the questions. But more importantly, you're going to truly listen to what's important in the client's frame of mind. And to get all their information, all their goals and dreams and wishes and summarize it down on a couple pieces of paper, it's difficult. So, I, so as Bill says, highly suggest you record it and check out the advisor roadmap in the, in the meantime. So one of the stories that I want to share with you, one of the key things that happened in, in my career in the financial business is I met a guy named Kevin No, And Kevin wrote this book called Exploring Advice. And when Kevin showed up at one of the meetings at the Bill Backrack workshop, he asks the audience three questions, and I'll never forget the three questions that he asked. First question is, what is the definition of advice? He wrote a whole book on exploring advice. More importantly, he said, did you know that there's no clear definition of advice? So better question yet, what is the definition of good advice? Second question he asks is, what is the definition of a quality financial plan? And that's where I took it from is his book. It's a great question to ask because financial planning or a quality financial plan, it just sounds different. So I highly encourage you to talk about a quality financial investment plan. Now, third question he asks is, what does it mean to be a fiduciary? So from here, I found my mission, my mantra of my company is to help a million people get a quality financial investment plan. If I get everyone that's called to implement, the keyword implement, put together an implementation, implementation plan to help 50 of your clients and prospects get a quality financial investment plan, we're gonna make a big difference in their lives and their community and in your practice. So what I want to encourage you to do is we, we, oops, we need to go and really, really help people clearly define their goals. Most financial planning software, um, you know, fantastic software, but it could do a better job of engaging and putting pictures in. So here's my goals progress update. And it's just got the pictures and the images to clearly identify goals. So I highly encourage you to do that. Now, the next thing I really want to do, because we're limited on this time on this call today, is I want to clearly identify and find ideal clients. How I identify and find ideal clients is this way. Whether you're the insurance business, whether you're an investment business, whether you do a bit of both, what is the revenue you want from ideal clients? What is the revenue that you could generate from the ideal clients? And everyone asks me when I do my speaking on this picture, what is that? It's a sturgeon that I caught. It's 125 pounds, six foot four. It was like catching an F-150 pickup truck. It, uh, it was just on the bottom of a river, six feet down right there in British Columbia. Uh, but boy, was it fun to catch. Anyways, well, let's go after the big fish. Let's find how we can clearly identify what we're looking for is ideal clients. Whatever that means to you, you know, you could have different categories, different segments, different people you deal with, but clearly know the revenue that you're going to generate and what they're going to pay you, either upfront or first year. So I know you're sitting there writing it, you know, writing this down would be valuable. 
Is it five thousand? Is it ten thousand? Is it twenty thousand dollars? So I want you to write down what does an ideal client revenue look like, and let's start to go and find some ideal clients. Let me give you some high net worth facts. I'm not saying go off to the high net worth marketplace, but thirty eight percent of the high net worth worth really don't work with an advisor, and the ones that do are unlikely to recommend their advisor. So there's a huge opportunity in the marketplace. So the investors with the holistic financial plan are 20 times more optimistic. So going in with that approach, especially with wealthier clients, is going to be more meaningful than if you just go in to try to build a relationship over time, which is the old school way. We're going to go in with quality financial planning and advice and use a little bit of technology to get there. The advisors that do that have 40% more assets under administration. I won't spend any time on technology, but I'm going to give you a couple little technology tips. So let's try to figure out today is, okay, so we have some questions we can ask these people. Now, how do we find them? Where do we go to get them? How do we accumulate them? Where do we get all these potential clients? That's what we want to know. So when I built my practice, I had several different things that I did, right? Back then, I did articles. I did some, you know, advertising. Back then, it was about content. Today, it's about social media and what we call CTA, calls to action. So social media and calls to action. I'm going to talk about today about a process that really was effective called the 611 process. And yes, I got referrals slash favorable introductions. But there's no one that I've heard that have a more comprehensive approach than working with center of influences than I do. So I want to share that with you today. We're going to talk a bit about events, and we'll talk about a few other things. But I generated 10 to 20 leads per month, and I'm going to show you some strategies to help you generate more leads per month. So when I do coaching with advisors, I run a coaching program, and it's for $475 a month. And every single month, we're working on different processes to really acquire more ideal clients. So I talk about what's your current database and what's your prospect's journey. If I was a prospect of yours, what's the journey? Because I might not decide right away to deal with you or work with you. You know, I might have met you over time. What's the prospect's journey? And then we want to go through the process of meeting ideal clients and building your pipeline through the 611 process. So all different kinds of different things that we do on the coaching. So uh, seminars, workshops, fusion marketing. All different kinds of strategies but I won't go into the all the strategies today I just want to share a couple of the strategies if you're interested one of the things I did was I took all the things that advisors do successfully on the prospecting side of things and I put together a checklist so if you want a checklist of all the things that people do and ask you a whole bunch of questions there's about seven eight nine ten pages on that prospecting checklist just shoot me an email I'll send you that checklist and it'll ask all the certain questions on how all the things and activities that you can think about doing to acquire more ideal clients. So this, you know, as you know, there's there's several different things that may work. There might be a combination of things, and that's what we want to talk about today. So let's dig into what I call the 611 process. The 611 process is something that you know is very simple and and effective but it takes a bit of time to build. So I'm not gonna to spend too much time on it. I wanna give you a simpler version of this. I sit down with one of your clients, or you sit down with one of your clients, and each and every meeting that you do, you have potentially six centers of influence that you could work with, get to know or meet, or actually give out as a referral. So I'll, walk through who those six are in a minute but each and every client so if you have a hundred clients you've got potentially 600 center of influences in your current client database to meet to get to know to network with to market to and to get referrals from to give and get referrals so you've got them already sitting in your database so we're going to talk about how we're going to meet with them, how we're going to capture those as an opportunity. The second one is what we call favorable introduction. We've all heard all different kinds of referrals, and you might have a great referral talk, and that's that's fantastic. You know, as a marketer, 
I always had difficulty in, in, you know, trying to do a very subtle referral talk that I was comfortable with. It all comes down to comfort. So I'm going to give you a favorable introduction process that I was comfortable with that I still use today, even in my coaching and consulting program. And then we're going to talk about events because we know that your best clients, they choose their financial advisor because they met you somehow, right? They met you on the ski hill. They met you and they got to know you. They connected with you and you had a bit of a conversation. So how can you meet more of those type of people? Well, we're going to meet them through your existing clients. So let's talk about the favorable introduction process and the events first, and then we'll go into the center of influences. So when you finish a meeting with an existing client, what is your follow-up process? At the end of a meeting, as you know, there's a whole bunch of paperwork, there's a whole bunch of discussions, there's a whole bunch of things you need to do, there's a follow-up list, there's lots to do. And so most advisors in the past were taught at the end of a meeting, that's when you position referrals. Well, that works so well, doesn't it? Because are you having more paperwork these days or less, right? You got to chop down trees and lop them off your desk these days with all the stuff you need to do. And how are you going to kind of squeeze in a referral, right? I get it. I understand. I was an advisor. It's probably the worst time to do it because you now have more disclosure and more things you need to do, not less. So putting it out at the end of a meeting, probably not a good place to put it. So here's what I suggest. When you do your follow-up, all I want you to do is ask one question. You write this question down, right, saying, by the way, thanks for the meeting. You close off the meeting, and you turn to them with your clients and say, we're going to send our follow-up summary of the meeting or our notes or whatever your process is of a follow-up after the meeting, right? And by the way, is it okay if I send another email to you that if you ever wanted to introduce me to someone, all you have to do is forward that email to one person. I'm not asking you to go and forward it on to you, but is it okay if I send that other email if you ever wanted to introduce me to someone? And it's part of your process, so clients will say, yeah, sure. So you send your follow-up summary email process and you send a separate email and here's what the email says. Hi, client, thanks again for your time today. As I mentioned, here's an email a client said about me that you can edit, change, or forward on. I know most people already have an advisor they work with. It's a conversation they'll get value of regardless if they work with me or not. So the email basically says, Grant has done a fantastic job helping me clarify my goals, communicate on a regular basis, and keeping us on track and giving us confidence. I think having a 15-minute coffee with Grant have them walk through the future clarity conversation is valuable regardless if you work with Grant or not. So the email is basically teaching people how to introduce you. And I'm going to give you, let you in on a little secret. I wrote five different books. And in the books, there's testimonials. Who wrote those testimonials? You guessed it. I did. And I sent three testimonials to people and saying, here's some testimonials. I'd love if you said something nice about me and sent it back and give your name and endorsement. Now, I'm not saying all books do that, but a lot of books sometimes do that because they'll get more testimonials that way. Because if I asked you, hey, would you mind writing something about me and sending it forward to someone? Yeah, sure, no problem. And they go to their computer and they go, hmm, what does he want me to say? How do I say it? What do I... Right? Give them the testimonial. And here's exactly what's going to happen if you use this process, because I've used it several times. The first time you send it out, crickets. Nothing happens. Very little. You might get a referral or a favorable introduction or not. The second time is, would it be okay if I sent an email? And they go, oh, yeah, you know what? You sent that email to me. I was talking to Bob. Can you forward that along? And I'm going to forward it to Bob, and I'll introduce the two of you. Great. Would you mind if you carbon copied me in on that email? Perfect. You now taught them how to refer, and they know exactly how they're going to introduce you, what they're going to say, and you're carbon copied in. So they've already known because they've already talked about you with someone else. They just don't know how to specifically refer you. 
So a very simple way, at the end of a meeting, our follow-up process is we're going to send a summary of what we talked about today. And also what I'd like to do is send you another email introducing me. That's it. One question. It's one golden question. Now, here's the second golden question. When you talk about referrals and positioning referrals or referral talk, I truly believe that a referral, if you're getting a referral of, uh, to a, a potential ideal client, let's say, and you're going to earn $10,000 a year off this ideal client, and you're going to have this client for at least five years, you're going to earn $50,000 off this referral. Do you think you could buy a coffee or a lunch or a breakfast? for $50,000 potential lifetime referral? Absolutely. So what I encourage you to do is at the end of your meeting saying, by the way, I'd love to buy you a coffee or lunch next week just to say thanks, and I just want to ask you a few questions. Would that be fair? Most will say, absolutely, that'd be great. So you schedule a meeting after the meeting. You've done all your business, you do all the follow-up, and then you're having lunch with them. And all I want you to do is ask them one very simple question. Because advisors ask me this question all the time. If I were to meet a group of successful retired pilots like you, where would I go to meet them? And Nick, my client, says to me, well, Grant, I'm at the airport all the time, and I'm part of the flying club. Why don't you come out there? We'll go for a flight one day, and I'll introduce you to a whole bunch of people. And you know what I said to you? I'm busy. Of course I'll be there. Yes, that'd be fantastic, right? Because I'm trying to find where I'm going to find a group of successful retired pilots. If I'm going to find a group of successful retired teachers or a group of successful business owners or a group of whatever the group is, how the heck would I know from Gorilla Marketing to find them? We have to ask our ideal clients of where would I go to find them and how would I meet them. A couple other stories. I did this with an advisor the other day, and I said, just ask this client this question. If I were to meet a group of successful surgeons like you, where would I go to find them and meet them? Right? And he was legitimately just asking the question. He says, well, this client system, he says, well, I do this um, chocolate tasting uh, thing because I love chocolate. My friend owns a chocolatier company and I bring all my surgeon buddies over to my house because I got a big house. So why don't you come to the house and I'll introduce you to a whole bunch of people as my financial advisor and you'll be have a chance to meet them because a few of them are new in town and I'm sure they need an advisor. You know what the advisor said, no I'm busy. Of course I'll be there. Yes, that's a fantastic opportunity. Right? So the advisor calls me back and says he's ecstatic. He picked up three surgeon clients, $20,000 revenue each, $60,000 of revenue a year just by asking a question. So just ask one question. If I were to meet a group of people like you, where would I go to find them and meet them? Your clients are going to give you the clues and the inside knowledge and the inside things of how to find them. And so that's where I go back to what's better, a referral or a favorable introduction. So I could give you a referral to a surgeon, or I could give you a favorable introduction at my house to another surgeon. Hi, this is Grant, my financial advisor. There's no awkward, who are you, what do you do, why are you here type of thing. I got to introduce. Oh, well, if he's Rick's uh, financial advisor, he must be pretty good. Get introduced through your clients by just asking a very simple question. I to meet a group of people like you. Where do I go? Where do I find them? How do I meet them? And so when I go back to the 611 process, one favorable introduction and one event. You're going to possibly go to their events, get to meet them, get introduced, as opposed to just getting a referral. Imagine if you talked to 10 clients and you had 10 emails to favorable introductions sent out and you possibly went to 10 events to meet other people very similar like you. A funny little other story. I'm actually um, down in California with a friend of mine who was a former client and he 
runs and manages the golf course. And so I asked him, if I were to meet a group of successful uh, retirees, where would I go to meet them? He says, well, we do this golf event every Wednesday morning. There's a whole bunch of very successful people there. Why don't you come out with me? You can golf. I'll introduce you to a whole bunch of people, which spun off into I met a whole pile of very successful people at these golf uh uh, events every Wednesday. I ended up sponsoring the trophy, which was like 250 bucks, and I have the actual computer in the clubhouse that helps people with the handicap now. So I completely got into that circle just by asking the question. I already meet a group of people like you. Where to go find and meet them? So hopefully that really really helps them. So there's the email, and the email basically says. Tell them what to do, tell them how to do it, and tell them what will happen next. That's the secret to writing the email. Now you have the email. So the events, you're going to go to your client events, and they're going to introduce you. Some, you don't even have to plan the event yourself. These are the client's events. You don't have to do any planning. You just have to show up with your client, right? And so you're going to get introduced to all different types of client events. And you're going to also work with your center of influence and ask them the same question. If I was to meet a group of successful accounts like you or clients that you work with, where would I go to meet them? Well, why don't you come to our golf event and I'll introduce you to some of our partners here. All right? Asking that simple question to get introduced. So what we want to do is we want to help build out the what I call the magic six, the center of influences. So as Bill Backrack says, if you become one of our ideal clients, you know, and your trusted advisor, we'll put a team around you. So who's the team? What's the magic six? So obviously a lot of advisors work with legal and accounting or tax advisors for their clients, but who else would you want to put on your magic six? I mean, why would I want a real estate professional or a mortgage broker on there? Well, it's quite simple. It's money in motion. So working with those people, they're always working with money in motion. So when money's in motion, it's a great opportunity. Even more of a bigger opportunity, commercial realtors, commercial mortgage brokers, and commercial insurance agencies, big money in motion. So put those team around them. And so how do you find these people with your current clients? So... You can write these three questions down, very simple. We're going to put a team around you. We're going to work with your people, or we'll refer you to our people. So example number one, we're going to look at your uh, tax advisor. So are you happy with your tax advisor? I'll do my own role playing here. So are you happy with your tax advisor? Say, yes, I am. Great. Who's your tax advisor? Well, Bob. Bob does a great job. And he clarifies my taxes, and very simple. Excellent. Hi, Bob. It's Grant Hicks calling. I was working with a mutual client of ours, and he says you do a fantastic job of the tax work. I'm always looking for more accountants to get together with and network with. Can we get together and have a coffee? I've never had a no because we are using a mutual client to get introduced to that tax advisor. So, so your clients, 100 clients, you have 600 potential center of influences in that database. Start tapping into it. And here's the, here's the secret, is you're going to give and get referrals. So you might get three names, an accountant, a legal, and a real estate uh, professional. And you say, are you happy with your general insurance agency? No. Great. Well, the general insurance agency that we work with usually save our clients $1,000, $2,000 a year, and they do a fantastic job in looking at all the risks. Would you be interested in having them reach out and contact you? And who's going to say no if they're not happy with the general insurance agency? And my buddy Dave from Denver taught me that little trick, is when you refer them to the general insurance agency and they do a fantastic job and save your clients $2,000, who helped them save $2,000? The general insurance agency or you so is building out your referral network by finding really good people through your existing clients and every meeting you might give out three names and you get three names 
So imagine if you had five meetings this week and you gave out three referrals at every meeting. You gave out 15 referrals by calling all these professionals and saying, hey, accountant, I've got a referral for you. Hey, lawyer, I've got a referral for you. You gave out 15 referrals. Do you think you're going to start getting some of them back? Absolutely. So start collecting. You might collect only two to start with, maybe three, but eventually four, five, or six. I'll give you a couple other secrets. Bookkeepers, if you're dealing with business owners, bookkeepers are gold. Can you imagine if you really had a good relationship with a bookkeeper of your best business clients? How much planning and cash flow and insurance that you could do if you really had a good relationship with and an open relationship with a bookkeeper of your business owners. So knowing bookkeepers, critical. And you can look at commercial real estate, commercial insurance, commercial mortgage brokers, and look at influencers. I had a good friend of mine who owned a moving company, and he would always chat to people when they're moving into town about, hey, are you, do you have a financial advisor? He just loves chatting with people. He's a good friend of mine, and he was an influencer. I got great leads from people moving into huge homes who needed to find a local professional advisor, bank, etc., and he was good at that. So there's all different kinds of influencers that you could put at. So magic six, every single client, imagine if you met with 10 clients, you've got 60 potential COIs to work with. So in the bottom right-hand corner, how many COIs do you have now, center of influences do you have now? And how many would you like to work with this year? I always work with about 20 of them on an ongoing basis. Through this process, if you've got hundreds of clients, you're going to have tons of COIs. All you need is 20 good ones to work with. And so what do you do when you go to meet with them? And I'm going to talk a bit about that next just to give you some clues and ideas. So the benefits of the Magic Six is you're constantly rainmaking with every single client. Because every single client, you're either going to give three names or get three names or both. And you're building a process of giving and getting favorable introductions and building that team around them. So that's where you're going to build your mini family office is your team that you're going to put around these people and increase your productivity and segmentation because if your clients don't need these people, they might not be as sophisticated, which is fine. All right. So here's an example of a worksheet that I always have at every single client meeting. Who's your accountant? What's the value of the accountant? And do we have your tax planning documents? Who's your lawyer? What's the value of your lawyer? And do we have your estate planning documents? And this is where I would show this to Center of Influences. This is our process that we're going to give and collect six Center of Influences from every single client so that we know the team that we work with, right? So I put on here, who else could you have on there? There's all different kinds of people you could put on there. I had a, I had a boat broker, uh, people that buy and sell yachts, and uh, he was a good set of influences because people buying yachts have lots of money. So different kind of people that you, that you could put together. Now, truth be told, when I built up this process, it worked extremely well. And I put the six fields in my contact management, the CRM system. And then eventually, I just trained the staff at the front when clients would come in saying, oh, we're just updating your profile. We just need to get the name of your account, lawyer, realtor, mortgage broker, et cetera. And they collect the information for me even before the meeting. And you could use your assistants or your team to collect the information. At the very least, you need the data. Collect the data. Six people from every single client, giving and getting. So the whole process is to give and get names at every single meeting. Imagine if you called 10 accounts and lawyers this week and gave out referrals. Do you think you're going to start to get some back? And so I'll give you tips on how to get the referrals back. So you got 100 clients, you got 600 COI. So that'll keep you busy for the rest of the year. So all you need is 20 or 30 of them. So now you want to go meet with them. And what do you do when you meet with all these center of influences? Well, if they don't meet with you, I mean, that's a shock because you're going to say, oh, well, we have a mutual client that we're working with. And he said, you do a fantastic job. I'll let them know that you're not interested in getting together. It's never happened. So I, I wouldn't even know what to say at that point in time. So meet them through your clients. So what do you do when you meet with them? You write these tips down. I'm going to give you four critical things you need to do. Obviously, you're going to need to share your ideal client story. Whatever that story is, have that story. These are the ideal clients that you work with. If you don't have an ideal story, get an ideal story. 
and share the ideal story and then ask them about who their ideal clients are. And this is where you're just trying to break the ice to try to figure out if this is a fit or not, right? And this is could be someone you could work with. If it is someone that you could work with, then I highly encourage you to do the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity works this way. Would it be fair, Mr. Accountant or Mrs. Accountant, for every five referrals I give you, all I expect is one in return. Would that be fair to you? For every five referrals I give to you, all I expect is one in return. Would that be fair to you? They say, sure, great, now you've got a deal. I'm gonna track and follow our five referrals and we're going to, all we do is expect one in return. And so I'll teach you how to do that one in re return. Because the final point on here, as you can see, is you teach. I sit down with a, uh, financial advisors all the time and I, when I do my coaching, and I say, can you bring an accountant that you work with to the meeting? And so when you bring that accountant to that, to that meeting, I always ask the accountant, what do you, uh, how do you refer your financial advisor? And most of the accountants say, uh, well, I, um, I give out cards. Um, I don't really know. Most of the professionals don't really have a process or don't know how to refer people. Teach them how to refer. If we have someone who's interested in your services, we will get either verbal or written agreement to give their personal information to you, and we will contact your office and have you reach out to them. Sound fair? And all we expect is the same in return. So you're teaching them how to refer. A lot of times they think that just handing out business cards, give me a stack of business cards. Well, that works so well, doesn't it? I never gave out business cards ever to a center of influence. Bad idea. Teach them how to refer and then communicate with them as if they were an ideal client. Invite them to your, your special events. Invite them to client appreciations. Let them know how it is to be an ideal client of yours and how you're going to communicate with them on a regular basis. So start to build out this process in 2018. You start to give out 60, 80, 100 referrals. Do you think you might get five or 10 back? Because the rule is six to one. Six or seven to one referrals you give out to get back. And that's usually the ratio. If you're dealing with larger high net worth clients, all you need is one back, but that one back is usually a great referral. So work with your center of influences and get that from them. So I'm gonna finish off with a couple more ideas and slides. I wanna make sure if you do have any questions, you could pop it in the question box. Uh, also in the question box, we're gonna make sure that we have the link to get the free ebook. We'll make sure we follow up to make sure you get the free ebook because the list of all the ideas and strategies step-by-step, step, they're all in there and make sure that you've got the, the takeaway from that. So I'm gonna talk a bit about technology right now. Coaching with advisors and working with advisors, I helped advisors save hundreds of hours of time by using stuff like GoToMeeting. If you haven't used GoToMeeting or like a Skype business for meetings, I highly encourage it, especially with clients and out-of-town clients, especially with difficult clients that are hard to get a hold of. So GoToMeeting is the new way to communicate with clients, to put your presentations, put your planning, put your work stuff on like a PowerPoint presentation, just walk through the meeting, walk through the agenda. And that's what I'm teaching advisors to do, is just get all your processes down into a PowerPoint and then have the meetings through GoToMeeting. Clients love it, they appreciate it, Imagine if you have a whole bunch of out-of-town clients. One of the advisors I worked with in St. Louis saved about 75 hours of travel time last year just by setting up GoToMeetings. So full disclosure here, I don't get paid by GoToMeeting at all to do this. I just love their technology. It works great for all the meetings that, that I do and advisors do with their clients. If you have an online calendar, for example, like a time trade that I use, making sure that you're using technology as an online calendar, very simple thing to do. There's all kinds there. Um, but have an online calendar, have a uh, online meeting process because clients are gonna 
want more technology in the future. And of course, LinkedIn. A lot of advisors use LinkedIn for the industry stuff, and that's great. You could connect with me on LinkedIn. Be more than happy to. You could follow my blog on a on a weekly basis through LinkedIn. Uh, it's all on practice management stuff, and and you know help you grow your business. But more importantly, is using LinkedIn in the future. A lot of advisors now are using LinkedIn to connect with other clients. And that's where you could send, hey, is it okay if I sent a um, email to you if you ever want you to introduce me? And is it okay if I sent that email through LinkedIn? So that question that I asked earlier, if you start to send it through LinkedIn, you might even get more connections uh, through LinkedIn. So three critical technologies you, you definitely need to, to use in your practice, LinkedIn, is getting more and more popular. Uh, go to meeting, save hundreds of, of time, and online calendar. One of the things I also wanted to introduce is if you if you do want to find out about online training and coaching, uh, Bill Backrack has a fantastic service. You can click on the link there, check that out, and uh, it's got all the client acquisition tools, services, videos, and so forth. It's a fantastic tool that, that, that you can really help grow your business. Now, I want to leave you today with one thing that truly, truly grew my business. This is the one thing that made the biggest difference in my business. I built a board of directors to help clone my best clients. Let me share this with you. I also did a board of directors with Center of Influences. What I did is I gathered 12 of my clients together and I said, I just want to buy you lunch, ask you some feedback questions on things I was thinking of doing to grow my business. And that's really what the intent was. And so I asked them, you know, I'm thinking of doing this golf event and bringing out a golf pro for client appreciation. What do you think? And most of the clients around the room said, yeah, that, that'd be fantastic. It'd be great. We love golfing. But the other thing is, why don't you buy hanging baskets, go by a client's house and say, hey, just to say thanks for your business, here's a nice flowering hanging basket because people on Vancouver Island where my practice was love flowers and gardens and so forth. And I thought, well, that's a good idea. So I went and got these big baskets, knock on the door, hey, just like to say thanks for the business, come on in, have a coffee, have a catch up with them. Um, they, they said, hey, there's a couple people I want you to meet. I'll, I'll reach out to them. I'm seeing them later today. Three days later, I get this, you know, appointment set, and one of my largest clients, you know, uh, is about five point six million dollars. I said, "How did you find out about us?" Well, we went to our neighbors. They raved, you know, asked how where you got the hang basket. They raved about you for half an hour. I had to come and meet you, and so I always got my best ideas through my clients. So what I encourage you to do is get twelve clients together, do a board of directors meeting. The whole strategy is in the book, the ebook that I'm going to give you step by step, and I cloned my clients. I took 12 of my best clients, and I got another 12 referrals and favorable introductions from those people. Imagine if you took your top 10 clients and cloned them this year, you'd probably have one of your best years ever. I encourage you, just do it once. Just do a feedback meeting. If you need help with it, send me an email. I'll be more than happy to do it. It's gutsy. It's difficult to do but it will be able to clone your best clients. You're going to get some great feedback and you're going to really help grow your business from your client's perspective. So I'm a big believer in it because I clone my best clients. I did the first one. And I'm like, wow, how many of these can I do in a year? And that's how I really, really built my business is by cloning my clients. And then when I built out my network of center of influences, then I brought them together and I said, hey, I just want to walk through all the things that we do for our clients, here's our value promise, and here's some of the things we're planning on doing. I just want your feedback and opinions and ideas. And I brought 12 center of influence, accounts, lawyers, realtors, mortgage brokers, etc. Bought them lunch and went through all the things that I'm doing and had a bit of a discussion and so forth, right? The weirdest thing happened when I followed up with the 12. Six of the 12, when I followed up with them, said to me, can I ask you a question? Sure. How do I become a client of yours? That wasn't the purpose of the board of directors meeting, but now I have center of influences who wanted to become clients of mine. They may not be ideal, but they're fantastic influencers to have as ideal clients. 
And so I did board of directors meetings all the time with center of influences to work with different, what I call fusion marketing. I'm going to do a seminar or a workshop. Would be interested in joining in. Sure. What do I need to do? Well, I want you to send the email to your 300 clients, Mr. Accountant. I want to send the email to your 300 clients, Mrs. Lawyer. I want to send your email to your 300 clients to Mrs. Realtor. And now we have 900 people invited to a meeting instead of just my database. So you tripled, quadrupled your database just by doing fusion marketing and events with them. So working with the board of directors, you can see how powerful it can be in the future and put together and clone your best clients. Now, I've got some time in the end. If there is any questions, I'm going to just check the question box to see if there is any questions on here. Um, so questions. Worked with the 50 founders. Oh, OK, go to meeting. OK, excellent. So someone said it. go to meeting works fantastic. Uh, yeah, great. It's, I, you know, I'm, I'm not. Uh, full disclosure, I don't get to pay for using any technology. I just find the one I like and, uh, you know, use something like that. But at the very least, you're going to save a ton of travel time, save a ton of meeting time, and your meetings will go uh, a lot quicker and smoother. And you'll also get, you know, make sure you got nice, colorful pictures like you do, you know, like I do on my screen. So let me finish off by just giving you a quick little summary of, of what we talked about today. So all I want you to do is tomorrow when you run into clients and prospects is saying, would it be valuable if we did a beneficiary audit for you? In other words, listed on one page, all your statements and who the beneficiary is going to be, what the outcome is, and gave you a summary. Would that be valuable to you? And just ask that question, would it be valuable if you did a beneficiary audit? The second thing we talked about today is to go from products and services to planning and advice is to start ask the valuable questions. Put, would it be valuable if we help get your clarity on your goals? Would it be valuable if we put together an implementation schedule? Would it be valuable if we did a fee audit? So I gave you three, four, five different things to look at. Would it be valuable if we did a quality financial and investment plan? Would it be valuable if we show you the probability of success of reaching your goals? Would it be valuable? Right? If it wouldn't, then okay, that's fine. So would it be valuable? So someone said, can you put up the previous slide with your info? So the previous slide is this the previous slide, client board of directors? Not sure if the previous slide that you're asking in the question. Uh, client board of directors or, oh, this one. Okay, so that's my info. So if you want to contact me, there's my email address right there. And there's the advisor roadmap. That's what someone was asking for. Does that help you? Uh, thank you. One of the best webinars I ever had. Thank you. Uh, best year in 2018. Excellent. Thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, so board of directors, we talked about, so beneficiary audit, just asking that question, would it be valuable, right? We talked about, it takes a bit of time, we talked about the 611 process. You got 100 clients, you got 600 COIs to start giving and getting, and just start to build that process out. Imagine how many COIs you could start working with and use the law of reciprocity to engage them. If I ask them, would it be valuable for every six referrals I gave you as all I expect is one in return? If they said, well, no, or I'm not sure, move on. Very simple. But if they say, yeah, absolutely, right? If they're looking for more business and you can provide them with six ideal clients that they're looking for, you become a host that brings them business and they become a host that brings you business. 20 center of influences you're working with, you're giving and getting referrals, you get you get one a week from COIs, you're gonna have your best year ever. It takes time, but it works. Events. Ask the question. 
if I were to meet a group of successful retired pilots like you, where would I go to meet them and find them? People are always asking me for great prospecting ideas and how do I grow my business and so forth. You know what? I'm going to be bluntly honest. How the heck should I know how to prospect in Denver, Colorado? I don't live there. How would I find a group of successful retired pilots in Denver, Colorado or California or wherever it is? Ask the client that question. Where would I go to find a group of people like you? Where would I meet them? How would I meet them? What events do they go to? What things do they do? How do they network? How do they get together? Is there, you know, finding those groups and then asking people, hey, if you ever need someone at a golf tournament or an event or thing, I'd be more than happy to help you or join you or come with you. Oh, fantastic. I get invited to golf tournaments all the time, and I'll introduce you to my lawyer partners. I'll introduce you to my accounting partners. I'll introduce you to my group of people that I work with. Meet them. That's how you're going to meet them through your clients and get favorably introduced. Don't ask for referrals because once people meet with you, what are the odds of them doing business with you? And the final thing is introductions, favorable introductions, 10 times better than referrals. It's the top of the hour. I'm going to end the meeting as promised. Uh, there's no more questions. I'm just going to check in the queue. So hopefully you got some value today. And my question to you is, was it valuable? If you do want to send me an email or a note, I would appreciate it. And for that, I'll make sure that you get the prospecting checklist. It's 11 pages of strategies and ideas on how to help you grow your business in 2018 and beyond. It just makes you think. There's the link to the free ebook right there. If you've got questions about coaching or you want to connect on LinkedIn, I'd be more than happy to hear from you. I Hopefully, you got some tremendous value out of today's meeting and make sure you made it valuable. I'll end it there today. If there's no more questions, uh, thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. And if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to entertain them. There's my e email address right there, and there's the link to the free ebook. Thanks, everyone, and hopefully you enjoy the rest of the day and make 2018 extremely valuable. Thanks again, and we'll end it right there. And people are dropping out. And we're just ending the meeting, and we will stop the recording now. Welcome. You're welcome. Again, this is Grant Hicks. Thanks again for joining our webinar. And if you have any questions, there's my email address. Uh, send me an email. We'll send you a prospecting checklist. There's the link to the free ebook. You got any questions on coaching or you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, feel free to send me a message. Thanks again, everyone. Enjoy the rest of the day and make sure you have a valuable 2018. Thanks again, everyone. Bye for now. This is the end of the webinar. It's been Grant Hicks doing a webinar with WebEx. If you have any questions, send me an email there. And or if you want a prospecting checklist, shoot me an email. And I'll be more than happy to get this 11-page prospecting checklist to you. And again, here's the link to the free ebook. If you want to download a copy, go to there. If you have any questions on coaching or want to connect with me on LinkedIn, you can connect through Grant Hicks on LinkedIn. Be more than happy to connect with you. If you have any questions, again, there's my email address. And that ends the webinar for today. Thanks again for attending, and have a great day, and have a valuable 2018. Thanks, everyone.